I've got a confession to make. Oh, Father, I've sinned. I'm a recovering Tesla fanboy. I worship the pig and God. Yep, I am. For years, I worshipped everything that Tesla and Elon Musk were doing. I believed that EVs were the future, and at the time, Tesla was the only one delivering on that dream. So when the Cybertruck reveal event happened, in November of 2019, man, I didn't hesitate. I plunked down my $150 Canadian and got my reservation order. And for the next two years, I dreamed about my 2021 Cybertruck. And I was near the front of the line, man. Like I was right up there. I got in within minutes of it popping up on the Tesla screen, like I'd had it all lined up, ready for it to pop up, and orders are now open. Boom, I was in. And although I was in Canada, I guessed that it wouldn't, you know, take that long. Was my decision just because it was Tesla? <laughs> that wasn't the only driver. You gotta remember the time in 2019 and what was available or what wasn't. There was all talk, no action. The specs were the real clincher here. Tesla was promising me a superior product to the traditional pickup truck. I had a 2007 Ford Ranger and knew that a minimum half ton truck was something that would not only save me time and money on job sites, but wouldn't put so much strain on the vehicle. I, I pushed my old Ranger. It was reliable, but simply didn't meet any of the growing needs that my work and company demanded. And I promised myself that my next truck would be electric. Was the shape polarizing? Oh yeah, I mean, but I bought into everything Tesla. It doesn't matter what would have popped up on that screen. But I also bought into the case that it was about the function, that this new form that they'd made, you know, made it much more capable than the standard internal combustion pickup truck. No rust, no dents, no heavy maintenance, huge range, superior towing, excellent hauling with a massive payload bed and all with exceptional storage for my work gear. So, you know, what wasn't to love? But it wasn't the weight that first turned me off. Elon Musk became far more eccentric. Maybe he hadn't. Maybe I just started to notice. I don't know. When you're really invested in something, you can overlook a lot of things. And he started saying and doing things that I, I just couldn't ignore. Go f yourself. Go f yourself. And all social media, spent a lot of time on YouTube, and I followed so many channels, and they were all just outright ignoring it. Or they spent huge efforts defending him, regardless of what he said or what he did. Until I realized that every one of these channels had branded itself around Tesla, Musk, or both. How could they suddenly come out and say, yeah, that's wrong, that's stupid, that should never happen, this is horrible, when their entire presence was all about pro-Musk, pro-Tesla, or both. Also, a large number of them had every penny they had in Tesla stock. Which at many probably made them instant millionaires, but to do a 180 degree turn would threaten their channel, their livelihoods. Suddenly my view changed, the clouds lifted, and I realized I was part of a club, or dare I say a bit of a cult. Tesla, Tesla. Tesla was doing amazing things. It was pushing everybody forward, but they were no longer the only game in town because they'd done so. But because of all the controversy, I just couldn't bring myself to keep my order. I canceled my Cybertruck order when Musk went off the deep end. In my view, it was really unbecoming of the CEO of the world's most valuable car company. Then I had to give it a second thought, and here's why. After Ford dealerships cranked the price of the F-150 Lightning to astronomical levels, my hopes of owning one of those was dashed. Here was this truck that had come out similar in price or better than what the Cybertruck was being offered for, went up like 20,000 bucks in one shot, and all of the incentives that allowed me to be able to buy it vanished. I thought, I'll be on the sidelines, I'll give Tesla potentially a second chance. I'll put an order back in. Of course, this time I'm way at the end of the line. You know, I knew it would be a wait. So I kept the old Ranger really well maintained. And I just hoped for the best. Well, as luck would have it, within two months prior to the Cybertruck delivery event, my Ranger went boom, boom. <laughs> The transmission gave up the ghost. I could have repaired it. I could have gone out and bought another beater and just 
have something hold me over. But I dumped thousands into this thing, keeping it running, and it wasn't worth what I'd put in. And then at that moment, Ford lowered all of the prices back down on the Lightning. And enough that in Canada, for the very first time, it qualified. All the money that I could get, both provincially and federally in the, in the country, became available on the trims that I wanted anyway, which was the XLT and the Pro. Those two trims only. Anything above it? You're out of the market. You couldn't get that EV money. I thought to myself, should I hold out for the Cybertruck? But then I took into account the reality that the number of pre-orders may have topped 2 million. And Tesla would take a year or two or three to ramp up. So if everybody went out and actually met their orders, I was going to be waiting for one of these puppies until 2030 at best. Basically meant Cybertruck just wasn't in the cards, even if I did want it. And I sat down and I took a good hard look. All of the information that I had. Now keep in mind at this time, Cybertruck hadn't had the delivery event yet. So we didn't really know all the numbers yet. I took what I thought I knew and I took what I did know. And I went, I'm not going to get much better no matter what. So I went ahead and I ordered a Lightning Pro. Available for the first time to non-fleet customers in Canada. I was like, this thing's gonna be, gonna be so inexpensive compared to other options, including like an XLT gas. So I waited to hear from Ford. I was all stoked. And then the month long shutdown to retool the factory happened. Then the strike happened. And then the impact of the US economic slowdown happened. And then the cold reality of how much money Ford was losing per truck happened. And Ford changed its stripes. <laughs> the company cut back production numbers and they allocated all of the new production line when it ramped up after all the changes to the factory to the highest priced trims. I'm guessing to offset the losses. But this knocked so many Lightning buyers right out of the market. All the XLT not allocated on the production line. All the pros not allocated on the production line. Everything was going to lariats and platinum. And that's what the dealers wanted on their lots because it gave them the biggest amount of profits. What nobody factored in was nobody could afford these and they dumped their orders. I was told there was no hope of getting my hands on my Lightning Pro until sometime in mid 2024 at the earliest. Well, that was it. I was stuck. I've got a truck broken in my driveway, nothing to replace it with. I've made a promise to myself that I'm going to go electric. I'm going to be waiting until 2030 for a Cybertruck. And now I'm going to be waiting until mid 2024 at best for a Lightning Pro. So I went on a hunt. At that very moment, I set out to find the next trim up, the XLT. It still barely qualified for $5,000 from the Canadian government and $4,000 from the BC government in the province where I live. And it, that's about on par with the $7,500 US dollars available across the border. Being that Ford almost exclusively was pumping out overpriced Lariat and Platinum trims and everybody wanted the XLTs and Pros only, but now you've got everybody looking for a very limited number of the same trucks in the entire country. But thanks to some very good luck, I had one ship from another province in October and I jumped behind the wheel of my very own Lightning XLT. Then the specs on the Cybertruck came out. I, I gotta tell you, like I just looked at these numbers and I went, this is a disaster, really. I thought it was a train wreck. The new tech was the buzz now. It had been muskified. Not the numbers that had totally intrigued me four years earlier and probably intrigued most truck buyers. It was all about drive-by-wire and 48-volt architecture and four-wheel steering and a whole bunch of other fair-weather, weekend, highway-driving truck bling that meant nothing to anyone who wanted to use a real truck, especially in a work environment. In fact, my Lightning beat the Cybertruck on many fronts, and it was a standard battery XLT. Since its release, the Cybertruck in various tests by the likes of Jerry Rig Everything, out of spec reviews, Edmonds and others, it didn't even come close to its EPA estimates. In almost every metric, the Lightning was on par or better than the Cybertruck, and for well over $20,000 cheaper. I kept $20,000 more in my wallet to get any of the trims that are currently available from the Cybertruck. Now, of course, everyone's gonna say, well, the base one you're not putting in. Well, that's because it doesn't exist. The most important thing here is the EV truck that I bought is in my driveway. The biggest factor for me was price, availability, and capability, and the lightning ticked off every box. Do I regret my decision? <laughs> Not at all. In fact, it's probably one of the only decisions I could have made. I didn't have much of a choice, 
As indicated by DriveTeslaCanada.com, we're not even going to see the Cybertruck in Canada now until mid-2025. It doesn't matter what your place was in the order line. You're just not getting one. They can sell a lot more of them at a higher price right in their own backyard. But outside of that, look, my F-150 Lightning came with what it said it had. I didn't have to dig around or get in touch with the company to find out whether or not certain features were even available on the truck that I just spent buckets full of money on. Well, that's the case, it seems, with the Cybertruck, because people are discovering after buying it that things like the locking differential don't exist yet. If we take a look back at the delivery event, Elon Musk was very clear. He talked all about how this thing was a great off-road beast and how it had full locking differentials, both front and rear. If it does have them, they're not working. People are paying for something that on their dash comes up as coming soon. So do I regret my decision? Mm -mm. I'm going to wait until all the bugs get worked out in one of these things. And I'm going to wait until we actually see what they're capable of for the money the Tesla's asking for these things. Stay away from the hype, buy on facts, and make sure all the details of what you're buying are provided. Buyer beware. What would I change and I think totally sucks about the lightning? Well, that's for my next video. So click the subscribe button and don't miss out. In the end, I'm really glad I stopped drinking the fanboy Kool-Aid and I woke up to the reality that hype is one thing, cold hard numbers and practicality are another. Is the Cybertruck amazing? From my perspective, no. From most who aren't going to use it in the way that I'm going to use it, it's probably far beyond what they expected. So again, it's up to the buyer to find something that fits. For me, I'm happy with the choice I made. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.